All right. So what is MongoDB? Well, this session is going to be a bit of theoretical, so just please listen up carefully. So MongoDB is a document-oriented database, and it's one of those uh, NoSQL modern databases that you hear of. But if you haven't really dug deeper into that, then you probably don't understand the reason behind this kind of databases, and that's what I'm going to explain to you today. So I know this bullet point doesn't quite make sense to you if you're new to MongoDB or uh, a non-relational database in general. So let me give you some let me give you some background. So since uh, 1995, around 1995, uh, there had been kind of a trend among developers moving towards object-oriented pr uh, programming. Okay, before that, up until then, procedural functional programming was was being followed. Now, if you have to understand the key difference between these two paradigms, then it is that, that in the procedural programming, in fact, in, in any kind of programming, you deal with two things. So one is data and another one is logic, right? But in procedural programming, you have procedures that only have logic. They don't have any data in it. The data is passed to them. They apply the logic onto them and they return the updated data to who, whoever calls them but they, they don't sort of have they don't have a copy of any data they don't keep the data okay so the data and logic are different in procedural programming whereas in uh, object oriented programming uh, the data and logic are together so in 1995, around that time, languages like Java, C++, Python, they were getting popular because they supported the object-oriented uh, paradigm pretty well. And that was the need of that because the internet was just, uh, you know, starting up. The, the, the client server architecture was getting, uh, it was getting developed. And object-oriented program kind of seemed the way to go. But keep in mind that uh, the database were actually the RDBMS database. So RDBMS databases are where you have relation, you have tables, you have a database, in each database you've got multiple tables, and each table are kind of related to each other. Now, here's the problem. The thing is that in object-oriented programming, you have got everything that you need to describe a particular object in one single entity. And that's how the programmers, the developers who were writing the application, that's how they liked it. I mean, that was the big... Uh, a uh, big uh, selling factor of object-oriented programming that you got not only the data but also the logic together. So for example, if you are an employee of a company, then there are many things that describe you. For example, what is your current salary, uh, which department you are in, what is your role, what is your seniority, right? So these are your properties. This is the data that describe you. And then there are also uh, uh, logics that can be implemented in, on you or you can implement on yourself. For example, you can ask for feedback or you can ask for appraisal, okay? Or uh, the HR can uh, lay off, lay you off or they can actually promote you. So these are the actions that can be performed on you or you can perform on yourself, right? So these are called logics that can be implemented and that will have a direct impact on the data that you have. So for example, if you get promoted, your salary number changes, right? So object allowed you to actually have all of this in one single place. So in languages like Java, when you create a new object, that object has got this data and the methods, they call it methods now. Uh, when you have a function inside an object, they call it methods. So you got all of that together in one place, okay? Uh, the thing is that, the point is, when you try to store this kind of data into the database, it is not easy. Okay, so for example, if you have a database for employees, then you just don't have one table that's going to store all the information. You got multiple tables. So for example, you got one table for employees, that, that, that's where you got your employee ID, uh, your first name, last name, role, seniority, but your salary information is in a different table and against your employee ID. And uh, the number of, uh, there's a different table for promotions this year and there's another table for layoffs this year uh, okay and all of these uh, tables have kind of like one common entity that is your employee id so on a particular year if i want to find out who all got promoted in this particular department then i'm going to uh, run a query that will span across multiple tables for example go look into the employees table 
uh, for this employee ID and find out if that employee ID also exists in uh, the promotion tables for 2019-20, whatever it is, right? And give me the results. And uh, this was not good. So when they were writing programs in object-oriented programming, they eventually had to persist the data to databases and they had to write queries that would run, run against these databases. So they had to sort of uh, uh, dissemble their object into separate tables and store it. Okay, so it's like if you have a car, okay, and if you want to park it in the garage, then you can't actually park it just as is. You have to sort of remove its all parts. So remove the doors, remove the roof, remove the tires, and you only got separate sections. Your, your garage room, your storage room is, is not big enough to store one single car, but you've got separate placeholders to, for storing your tires and your roof. So it's like every time you have to park the car, you have to disassemble it and then park it in separate pieces, which is kind of what the object-oriented programmers did not like. And they had been uh, loading that completely. But surprising it is that for from since 1995 or 1990, you can say for nearly 10, 15 years, there had been no new kind of data structure that emerged. People had been putting up with relational databases, even though uh, the developers did not quite like it, okay? Uh, and uh, with the advent of uh, uh, companies like Google, Amazon, and uh, Facebook, uh, it was getting quite clear that even in terms of performance, when it comes to handling big, massive amount of data, relational tables were, no, were not good. I mean, think of, a Google like a Google company's database, you've got multiple things in, da in multiple tables. And when you have to find one particular data that spans across like hundreds or hundreds of tables, then getting that kind of data could be very slow. And people in the internet age, they have uh, their tolerance towards anything that is sluggish over the internet has been going down, right? So that's why it was very important for many uh, aspects. And uh, now, these uh, object-oriented programming vendors, for example, Oracle, MySQL, they, they tried to come up with uh, ways to approach it. And even many community, actually, community developers came up with ways to improve it. For example, uh, there were JDBC drivers, ODBC drivers that made this, uh, this, some of these things actually a little bit easier, a little bit lighter, but the whole complexity wasn't taken away completely. Okay, so... Uh, somebody around 2005, they came up with the idea that why don't we actually store uh, the object that we know as is in the database. So, for example, if you uh, store, uh, if you represent object as let's say a JSON that's got all the properties, everything that you need to describe an object, all together bundled up in one single entity, directly into the database in one place, how would that be? So that's where this idea actually then started gaining traction and NoSQL data, uh, document databases were born. In fact, NoSQL databases, uh, anything that is NoSQL has got multiple types, for example, key value store, columnar storage. Uh, that's another topic, but here we are talk going to talk about document databases, okay? So MongoDB is actually one of them, so, okay? So let's go over to the next bullet points. For example, we already covered this, so I think this will make sense to you now. So relational databases generally store data in separate tables that are defined by the programmer. Okay? So, and a single object may be spread across several tables. But in document databases, they store all information for a particular object in a single instance in the database. And every stored object can be different from every other. Okay, so this is uh, what I explained to you right now. Now, documents in the document store are roughly equivalent to the programming concept of an object. That's what I told you, right? So, when they get an object, they store it just as is, with its, uh, its uh, you know, its uh, representation in JSON or XML or, uh, let's say, YAML. Uh, that's got all the properties or everything that it needs to sort of describe an object. They store it just as is altogether without actually splitting it, okay? And they are not required to adhere to any standard schema. 
this is also a very important factor so for example in rdbms every time you create a new table you have to specify that it's going to have just this many columns and each column is going to be a particular type okay it's not easy to let's even change the schema on a production database it's been very challenging for for all the production environments so for example if you have a phone number column that stores phone numbers in 10 digits and after 10 years the government decides to actually implement an 11 digit phone number scheme doing that kind of change is possible but it's it's very complicated okay you have to change the schema on a production database it's not easy okay and also adding a new column in the database it's not easy okay but with document db it's very easy so if you have let's say in your employee uh, uh, database you want to store the LinkedIn URL of the employee at the same time okay so you hadn't been storing that field it's a new field for you for you and you want to add that to your uh, database uh, so you can just do that you can actually in your program you can define a new field and it's going to be part of your object and it will be stored along with the schema uh, it doesn't have to be like that so there is no standard schema defined ahead of time okay so documents are addressed in the database via a unique key. So each document in the database will be addressed by a particular key. It will have a unique key and that will identify each document from another. Okay. A document stores use the metadata in the document to classify the content. Okay. So if, if we don't have the schema, but uh, still the, uh, the kind of data that is going to be stored in a particular document is going to be having some metadata that, that, that will define that okay this is going to be a string that is, this is going to be a phone number this is going to be a zip code and this is going to be uh, let's say yeah something image right so things like that so if you need to understand so there are some terms that are that have some of the equivalent term in RDBMS so that if you have been working on MySQL or Oracle then this will be easier for you to map for example so what you know as database in RDBMS is still database in document DB uh, what you know as tables in RDBMS is equivalent to collection in uh, document database okay and uh, what you know as roles in a particular table is equivalent to documents Okay, so you store documents in document DB. That's what people generally use in when they talk about. So you got database. A database has got multiple collections, and each collection has multiple documents. Just like in RDBMS, you got a database. It's got multiple tables, and each table has got multiple rows. Okay. So this uh, is a little bit of snap uh, snippet that tells you that, uh, for example, this would be your object representation when you're writing the application okay so if you had to just sort of convert your object into a json representation this is what it would look like and this is how you would store that in the document db as well just like this okay whereas uh, in rdbms then you would have to create different tables like person phone and address and then if you have to find a, a person whose uh, phone number is this then you have to map between these two tables uh, if you uh, if you have to also find the city that they belong to you have to again map against three tables this is a very silly example but think of the production table production databases complexity and you'll get the pixel that how complicated it can get not to say that the rdbms tables are not good they have their own place and uh, nothing can beat them in that particular place but there was a need for this kind of uh, databases and it's been addressed with the document databases all right and another thing is that uh, RDBMS uh, databases also try to solve this problem by providing JSON support. So it's like they would allow you to store JSON data in a particular column. Okay, so usually they would only allow like strings, numbers, booleans, and things like that in in the in the database columns. But they also these days, I mean, for quite some time now, they allow you to store the JSON type data as well in the column uh, but it's it's got many complexities sometimes uh, looping uh, finding that particular uh, object in the relational database could be very complicated okay so for example uh, let's say you want to find a 
people who have names that which is Krunal, then you actually have to go and look into each row. In each row, you have to go and pick up this JSON, and in the JSON, then you have to do the parsing and mapping, and you have to find that element. It becomes very complicated. So the JSON type was kind of an add-on. It was not addressed, uh, you know, head-on. It was kind of like plugged in later on to allow uh, people to also use JSON. So it's not quite an ideal thing. It has got some indexing support, but it's not up to the mark. And uh, document database is the way to go if you want to be doing, uh, if you want to be storing documents. Okay, so that was our session on uh, uh, MongoDB and DocumentDB in general. I hope you liked it. It's got nearly 16 minutes, but I think you get the gist of it. Thank you.